Right then. Next up, you've all met David before, I imagine. So this is David Holland from Salix, and he's going to introduce some of the uh, techniques they're using for bank stabilisation. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, really, I'm just going to fly through a load of um, slides, really, of how Salix approaches uh, bank erosion issues in the UK and some of the techniques and materials and solutions that can be used to manage um, soil erosion, uh, river bank erosion. Start by saying that bank erosion is a natural process. In many rivers, it's a key driver to many niche habitats and, and to, to, to um, sort of flood management. So erosion is not a bad thing. Um, all the examples, and when we're talking of erosion here, we're looking at erosion that's either accelerated by human impact or erosion that is um, threatening an asset. Uh, so we do a lot of work with environment agency, with um, pipeline um, uh, people like Wales and West Utilities and National Grid who often turn up and find a, you know, a gas pipe sticking out of the riverbank after a major flood. So a lot of this is driven by um, the need to, to actually take action. Uh, often you don't need to if it's a rural area and it's a natural process. Um, just to reflect on, really started off from land drainage in the 50s and 60s. Um, hard engineering has been used an awful lot in the UK. It's something that um, you know, I think Chris Bowles touched upon yesterday from Seabeck. Generally, it's not very good, but it still goes on a lot. Um, you know, as Volker was saying in Germany, you have, uh, if you use hard engineering on riverbanks, you cut off any interaction between um, species that live in the water and need to come out onto land as part of their life cycle. Um, with soft bioengineering, or as Chris called it yesterday in America, biotechnical engineering, the environment actually typically call it soft engineering. We'll call it Engineering, you don't get those issues. Um, and we see an awful lot of it, and, and the impact is, is very obvious. Typically, where you get hard engineering, extensive hard engineering, downstream you always have instability, and that's a classic. Um, There's a scheme on the River Tui in Carmarthen where the council every year do 100 metres of block stone, and they're just chasing the river downstream year after year after year. Um, so sooner or later, they'll realise they have to stop and actually do something different. Um, again, yesterday it was touched upon, but everything about hard engineering is, is, is bad. When I first started doing bioengineering 17 years ago, it was very much um, hard engineering and we had to convince engineers that this could potentially be an alternative. Now I think it's becoming more of a last resort, not a, not a first, first thought. I think people are you know, realising that soft engineering um, is credible, um, bioengineering is, is credible. Um, you can see impact of hard engineering. This was originally installed to protect the grass, uh, a gas pipeline, uh, four metres high gabions. Um, and you can see downstream of the gabions, a huge uh, blowout, a four metre pool that cut into the bed directly downstream. Um, <coughs> CBEC did some modelling for us. So this is the hard engineering on the side of the bend, and you can just see the hot spot um, of energy that, that, that is then released when it comes off the hard engineering on the downstream end creating this huge blowout and actually exposing a, a high pressure gas pipeline in the bed of the channel. You see that real hot spot where the gabions terminate. So on this particular scheme we've gone in and de-engineered it. We've actually taken out all the gabions, graded the bank, uh, used softer bioengineering techniques and that hot spot has now disappeared on the modelling. It's gone. Um, that big pool is naturally filling in with river gravels coming downstream. So very much the whole th thing is, is to work with natural processes. Unfortunately, schemes still do happen. Um, my colleague Richard, um, we were dismayed at the scheme. It was a river diversion, 600 metres last year. Um, was it an over-eager engineer? No, it was a biodiversity officer from the environment issue who insisted that this went in on a lowland river. It's absolutely scandalous. And we've kicked off a, a huge stink and we don't do a lot of work in the Midlands region at the moment. But um, we're sticking to our guns. So bioengineering, effectively is a term that we use for soft engineering, it's the use of vegetation. Uh, normally it's used with um, either man-made or um, preferably where possible um, biodegradable natural fibre products. Of course, blockstone is, and, and riprap has been used as an engineering tool, but also vegetation has an engineering function. Um, and the three main ways vegetation works um, is, is that uh, roots physically bind the soil particles together. They transfer the strength of the root into the sheer strength of the soil. And um, they also, um, and this is what people think of, the roots reinforce the soil is the most important. It is an important 
um, factor, but not <coughs> as much as, as this uh, armoring. Um, the shoots actually bend over, uh, protect the soil surface, and equally as important is the fact that vegetation is rough and it actually slows down velocity locally, uh, and that takes a lot of energy out of a flow. So um, vegetation is, is you know, nature's way of, of, of holding banks up and um, working with natural processes with a minimal impact downstream. There's also a small geotechnical benefit to vegetation. Vegetation basically lets less water go into the banks, so the banks are drier, um, but it also then uh, physically holds up the banks with the, with the roots uh, in this buttressing effect. Again, when we first started over the years, we've had to battle hard to convince the engineering fraternity that, that this is a genuine engineering solution. Um, people think that there aren't, there's no data available. Um, we know that um, there is. Um, certainly we've done a lot of work very hard to, to, to sort of model rivers that we've done. Uh, and we know sort of flow velocities, shear stresses, stream power in, in, in that bioengineering has withstood over sort of projects that are 15 years old. And we know also in alpine areas they've done a lot of work. This is um, a flume, large flume created uh, by the University of Vienna down in, in the Alps, where they're looking at different willow bioengineering techniques, and they send controlled discharges from the reservoir over it, and they can measure a scour, or damage to vegetation, a soil loss, and, and then you can get a good idea of what sort of flow velocities these systems can take. The, in America, they've done um, a lot of work on grasses, grass species. Um, particularly with reinforcing grasses with different geotextiles. So we know particularly with grasses really accurately how, uh, what flow velocities they can withstand and for what durations. So how do we use all that? Um, the first thing to do is, is to look at the erosion process because you can't go designing a revetment and a lot of revetments are designed without really considering what the processes that are likely to go on or that are currently going on. So here's just two examples. Um, this is a classic sort of um, gravel bed river. You've got sort of undercutting of the toe, that steepens the bank and the bank collapses in. It's a classic turf collapsing in from this cantilever failure. And here you've got um, a tree, an impingement of flow, creating scour of the toe. Um, so here, a really simple technique that we use quite a lot is you've actually taken the tree out. You can see on the left, the stump is gone. We've used that whole tree cut into big branches and brash and used it below bed in a one meter pool. Um, a metre wide revetment effectively we've created and that just creates this roughness that we're looking for and then we're not worried about the bank above, the footpath that we're protecting is probably safe so over time we just let that bank naturally grade itself out so we've taken away the problem, the tree, and we've reused it um, about 30 metres of bank erosion solved in about one afternoon literally so bioengineering can be really really simple here the asset is a footpath, it's a low value uh, asset but still it had to have some sort of work to protect it. The original idea was to go four blocks down, four metres high with blocks down. Um, so just really a value engineering alternative. Different erosion uh, process is um, very much associated with rapid drawdown from rivers, often in very fine silty soils with low cohesion. We were lucky enough to work uh, on a project where on the river team two years ago that hadn't come out of bank for 50 years, since 1954. And the year we worked on it, it came out of bank, came up six metres out of bank four times. So uh, we had good first-hand experience of, of this drawdown process. How do I get that going? Help. Leah, yeah, you're the technical genius. <laughs> Done. Broken it. David's broken it. Mm -hmm. I'll show you after. Just, if yeah. anyone's interested, and it's Just nice, it's a, it's a time lapse of a flood and shows the bank. Just going to do it like this. All right. The old fashioned <laughs> way. The old fashioned way. If the links fail, we'll make it work this way. <coughs> so, effectively, there's our diggers, yeah. and with, um, this is a gas pipeline <laughs> scheme. Coming up. Yeah. No, we can see it. It looks great, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> the is rising. Um, <laughs> quite muddy. I'll, I'll tell you what's interesting, I'll show you after, because it's a nice little clip. How do I get that now? 
Does this count for my 15 minutes or can I go no, over? No, it starts again, look, the clock's reset. Reset, excellent. Enough. <laughs> okay, no. I forget that. But again, in that situation, um, this is a the major gas pipeline that takes all of um, Hereford and Worcester's gas. So there's a really significant asset that had to be protected. Um, the tow, there was scour at the tow, but the main process here was just these really weak soils collapsing in. And the only solution really was some quite major engineering to basically dig out the whole bank um, because it was so saturated and, and just constantly slumping. Grade it back to a natural angle of repose um, with imported material where needed and then bioengineering on the, on the top. But here this put a major uh, erosion problem and um, you know, it ends up being a million pound project to protect the gas pipeline. But again, what we've eventually come up with is now a more natural channel. Um, it's, it's soft lined, it's not hard. Really important again to consider uh, the vegetation zones. The, as pointed on yesterday, I think Chris in his in his talk, the toughest area to design for bioengineering for soft engineering is the toe and the margin. The toe because it's you can't get anything to live down there if it's below water. You can't use a bioengineering, so you need to possibly if it's deep water have some a bit of stone or a large wood or something in there. And the other tricky area is this um, marginal area where you get constant fluctuations of, of water. So you're constantly getting fluctuation. If you ever tried seeding a river bank, you often end up with a bare one or two metre patch at the bottom where the water's constantly coming up and down and the, the, the seed and vegetation just can't establish. Which is why really, a lot of you saw yesterday and those who come today can see these products. This is why these were invented um, and why they're so much used on um, river projects now. Uh, it is because they are mature, marginal plants that are adapted to that little um, flood area, that first sort of toe of the bank. And we found over the years the only way to get them to work uh, pretty as a guarantee thing is to grow them to a really high state of maturity, to so grow them for 12 months off-site in a nursery. If you put young plants in them and send them out six, eight weeks old, they'll just wash out or get flooded out, they'll drown, uh, or drought will get them if it's, if it's dry. So that we found the only way to, to really work is, is to have them mature. Another sort of regular soft engineering technique that's used, and Volker mentioned it in his speech, is this um, brushwood faggots. Very versatile, but the only time we would really <coughs> recommend using them is where they're completely submerged and there's no chance of them ever being exposed to the air. Um, when they're underwater and anaerobic, they almost fossilise and go hard. The moment they're exposed to air on a regular basis, within two years they've fragile and broken down. But they're very good for lifting up the living part um, of a bioengineering solution. So here in, in relatively deep water, um, this is an alternative to sheet piling on a, on a rail, a two kilometres of railway embankment. We're just using the brushwood as, as general fill here um, and to raise up the living element. So the coir pallet and the coir roll can actually, um, can actually survive. If they'd be straight in there, they'd be too deep. So this is a project for network rail. So it's a direct alternative to sheet piling for two kilometres. You end up with just a, within the first 12 months, a really nice, dense, 1.2 metre wide margin, absorbing all the flow and wave action. And obviously very, very good habitat. Uh, another very natural way, um, this is a, a project for Natural Resources Wales, where they took out a weir. Uh, the channel responded by the bed dropping, a lot of gravel flushed through, and an extensive bank erosion. It's a salmon river. They were losing up to one and a half metres of bank a year, huge sand and silt inputs into the river system. So this was more, no, not protecting an asset, this was more um, really um, just stopping uh, the release of fine sediments into the river. Really, really simple again, I think this is about a two week job. Just graded the bank. You see on the opposite side there's a load of uh, willow trees. Um, so we've graded the bank, just put some biodegradable coir matting, um, a blanket uh, uh, we find a coy blanket with a coy net over the top works really well in quite high energy situations. At the toe, um, we've just cut branches from the other side, from the willows. And we've just laced them uh, along the toe of the bank. Again, one where, where grass won't grow, but also to add this roughness and to get sediment to, to deposit out. And that's it after about six months. And that's the willow at the toe. So you can see there's a lot of roughness there. You get a lot of slow inner flow and a lot of sediment dropping out. So a very, um, very natural way of managing erosion rather than, it's not a total fix, but we're managing the rate of erosion and getting vegetation back on there. Again, you can see the, the coarseness of the coir fibre is very good at trapping the fine sediment and now you get things like canary grass, phalaris coming in, colonising in those areas. <coughs> These sort of um, mattings and geotextiles and grass, 
work in, in quite high energy situations or can work, but vegetation always has a limit. Um, there's always a cut off where vegetation won't work. You can see here relatively well established banks, one big flood, very significant bank erosion because the, the grass has failed. So we, um, we work a lot with these three dimensional um, products. Uh, they do allow um, really <coughs> vegetation to be used uh, a lot on dam spillways, a lot on flood defence embankments, um, where only block stone or concrete blocks would be used. They basically double or even triple the flows that vegetation can withstand. Uh, this is a direct alternative to, to block stone uh, all the way up the bank for a network rail. And one example we always throw in because it's, um, it's the first high energy river to be done really with bioengineering techniques uh, 11, 10, 11 years ago, starting in 2004, the River Ebu in South Wales, um, rock roll tow, willow and um, faggot to get something to grow, and then these three dimensional um, turf reinforcement mats. This channel is 1.2 kilometres of the new housing development all the way along, all colliery shale, and the original proposal that went through land drainage consent was two tonne blocks <coughs> set into concrete all the way through, and it was only a presentation like this where um, the client's engineer sort of here to say we could do this sort of thing that they said, oh, okay, how much does it cost? It was half the cost, uh, so we got the contract um, on our design and build with our sort of warranty in place. And it's the first scheme, and I know um, Natural Resources Wales and Environment Ministry use this site a lot to show people what can be used instead of blocks. Then. So it's around some headwalls that had the original blocks that still went in, it's tie-in. Um, but you can see the soft engine one year and seven years later, an awful lot better than, um, uh, than, than Blockstone would have been in that environment. In fact, the Blockstone is now failing. There's Blockstone in the middle of the channel, and the soft engineering has functioned perfectly. Blockstone's big. Flows get in around it and they can actually move it far easier than they can um, destroy the vegetation. Again, we mentioned it yesterday, um, so very quickly. Again, vegetation, constant wave action, constant flow in this marginal area. We found something as simple as adding a rock roll, and potentially in the future these schlicht rolls, um, in front of uh, coir rolls, in front of the living element, can actually give that bit of protection. So here in the same reservoir, coir rolls have completely failed, the wave action is too great. But simply by putting a rock row in front that absorbs the, the energy rather than reflects it, um, you can get vegetation to establish in areas where it, it wouldn't naturally grow. Um, and now it's established, um, it's, it's a long-term solution. You see um, on the River Taft by the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff, you can almost see that <coughs> rock row sucking in the, the wave. Uh, not much is reflected and reflected, it's a bit of splash, but most of it's just getting slowly absorbed into the small stones. Um, again, the rock rolls we, we, we did yesterday a lot um, with CCAMS and Ruth, um, but what we're finding now is it, it's the building blocks of bioengineering in higher energy situations. You can see it's a gravel bed river, it's very mobile. Uh, you know, you struggle to get bioengineering to work here without uh, a rock roll tow, um, but it does then allow the rest of the project to be soft engineering, and we saw from Ruth's presentation yesterday you actually get very good invertebrate habitat in, in, in the rock rolls. How much for time? So yeah, again, just yesterday, just reiterating that they do fill up with, with fine sediment. The, uh, they have the core sediment in them already, fill up with the finer sediment, so they match natural river gravels, and then they will vegetate. Um, I'm just going to show one few last slides. Again, Hamish and Chris talked a lot about large woody debris yesterday, and it's something that um, we're seeing a lot more of. So um, this was a a gas pipeline, again, taking most of the gas into mid Wales, uh, just off the River Seven, a little river called the River Rue. And um, they had a bit of a shock when the, the aeroplane did the, the helicopter, the two weekly flyover, and saw this pipe hanging out of the bank. Um, the bank had retreated at eight metres in one flood event. Incredibly mobile system. So the gas pipe is actually exposed in here. Um, but the bank had moved, was moving at about eight metres a year um, back into the pipeline which actually runs directly into it. So we ended up doing work on the whole river. It's an incredibly mobile um, system, and the, we involved Seabeck, and we came up with this plan to basically put a lot of wood in the channel. Um, so again, we used these root wads. Uh, see the eroding bank? And there's a lot of root wads on the banks to slow flow locally, um, to add roughness. And again, you can see there's a rock roll tow in there. And on the upper banks, we used a lot of brush mattressing, that's your willow technique, you lay willow branches down cover it in soil and they all root. Um, combined with the, um, the fact that these, these trees are actually willows as well, harvested from the local catchment. So 
because they're willow, um, once they're installed, they actually start to live again. So you get the roots ending up um, and the trunks suddenly get new growth. So you end up with a, a living mass of willow um, on that bank. Same photo. And we also put some large woody debris in. Uh, because the, the, the gravels move around so much in flood, it's quite difficult to stop things undercutting and to stop uh, major sort of river realignment. So we added woody debris. Um, woody debris that was actually contributing to the problem. It was causing gravel to deposit, to deflect at the pipe. So we took out the wood and replaced it. And this is quite amazing to see the response that one piece, one tree effectively can cause in a, in a, in a mobile river system. So that's it in, installed. That's the location of the woody debris that we installed. And after one flood event, that's the response. So that's the large piece of wood. The exposed gas pipeline runs here. So now we've basically built up a huge gravel shoal in front of um, the pipeline, so there's no way that, that can get undercut. You notice we've actually gone quite hard over the gas pipe. There is some, some blocks down in there because the client wasn't prepared to take any chances with that exposure happening again. Um, so you can see the bed of response is really dramatic, and that stayed there um, on several major bankful flood events. And finally, a lot of people ask, and I've already put this last one in, just to show well, how do you know that these things will last long term? Um, the first time these root wads and wood were used as a revetment was a, a demonstration project for then Environment Agency Wales uh, on the River Dulais. And um, the whole idea was to show landowners and people within the agency that you didn't have to use blockstone on Welsh rivers because that's all they use is blockstone everywhere. So here we're using bank grading, um, a root wad tow, and then just live cuttings and a geotextile on the bank. Uh, we installed, I think, about 15 of these large trees. You can see the idea that you, you key them back into the bank. Most of the anchorage comes from um, being keyed into the bank. And there they are installed. And the idea is that one picks up the flow and deflects it onto the next one, and so forth. So when the, when the flow is coming, it's, it's like a deflection technique, moving the flows out away from the bank edge. So you see, that's the channel. Um, I think it was seven years on. And that's that same bank uh, now. And you notice that... that there's not just willow, there's other things come in, there's grasses come in, um, there's gravel, it's now stable. The whole reach is deeper and better for fish passage. Finally, that is one of those root wads. Again, they were willow, so they've actually, the original root plate has actually grown in every direction. So you can imagine the fish cover and habitat that provides underneath is fantastic. That's it in the, in the winter <coughs> and that's it in the summer. So again, you can imagine that the structure of that on a river bank is incredible habitat as well as providing long-term stability. Thank you. Thank you.